Hello friends, this is a video of Squint Inside Out. You know, people are very much afraid about Squint, you know, but once you get clear, once you get these things clear, why does the head tilt? Why does the head, why, why the head is turn? Why the chin is depressed? And you know, we are going to discuss about third, fourth and sixth nerve palsies, right? Now at the end you have to cram it, but once you get thorough with these things, actually logically what happens and why does, you know, the head turns to the left side, intorsion, head tilt occurs, chin is depressed, chin is elevated. Why actually the core mechanism if you once understand, and it's very difficult to get these MCQs and concepts solved, right? The prerequisite of this video, you don't need to have a pen, paper, anything, you just need to have a brain and a bit of common sense, right? Uh, I'm going to, I'll, I'll explain it, uh, what actually happens with these gadgets right consider this as an eyeball and an eyeball right the this and consider this as a left eye we are going to discuss all those things what happens in reference to the left eye this is the left eye right this is the left eye this is the eyeball this is esotropia right this is esotropia exotropia this is elevation depression you consider this axis if you can see i have drawn this axis right so this is extortion right this is extortion this line this line should be straight vertical right so if it turns like this this is extortion this is intortion right this is adduction abduction elevation depression exotropia uh, I'm sorry, this is extortion and this is intortion, right? And this is this is the eyeball and this is the orbit, right? This is the orbit, so it will move according to the face turns, right? As per the face turn, right? Suppose if the chin depresses, the head turns, uh, if the chin depresses, this will go like this, right? If the chin elevates, this will go like this. If the head tilts towards the left side, it will go like this. If the head, head tilts towards the right side, it will go like this. If the head tilts towards the left side, uh, not tilts, if the head turns towards the face turns towards the left side, this will go like this. And if the face turns towards the right side, this will go like this. So, you know, whatever the orbit will move, the eyeball will move accordingly accord with the orbit, right? And the eyeball has independent action as well. So, due to the, you know, squint, there is problem in extraocular muscles. So, maybe there will be esotropia or exotropia or whatever it is. So, the orbit, the face will try to accommodate the problem of eyeball, right? Suppose, uh, let, I, I'll explain you with the individual nerve palsies. Let me give you an example. Suppose, this is exotropia, right? The orbit is turning like this. This, I am sorry, the eyeball is turning like this. This is exotropia. To accommodate, this is the orbit which will move, which will move and which will move according to the face turning. So the face will turn towards the right side. The face is turned and the eyeball, this, this is the normal gaze, right? Normal position. The eyeball goes into exotropia. The face will turn towards the right side this is the normal case that, that, that the accommodative effort of the orbit or the face that restored the normal case right we are going to in, so you have to assume this is the eyeball this is the orbit right we are going to discuss individual nerve palsies the most important are third fourth and sixth nerve palsies let us begin with the simplest one sixth nerve palsy lateral rectus so, six nerve palsy supplies the later, lateral rectus, lies. The function of lateral rectus, as you all know, is abduction, right? So, if there is no abduction, and, and what is important in this is, there is overaction of the opposite action, right? There is no abduction, so there will be more adduction, esotropia, leading to esotropia, right? We are going to discuss about the left eye. So, in the left eye, there is left eye esotropia. So, as an accommodative effort, there is same side ipsilateral head turning, that is left side head turn. As you all discussed, let us again discuss it. We are discussing the case of 
left sided sixth nerve palsy right this is left sided this is a normal case the axis is like this left sided sixth nerve palsy what happens is this is normal case and in sixth nerve palsy there is left sided esotropia right there is left side okay there is left sided esotropia now if you want to restore this gaze if you want to restore this gaze the muscle is paralyzed right muscle is paralyzed so the eyeball will remain like this so as an accommodative effort the head the head there is that is here along the orbits are attached over here so the head turns the head turns towards the same side this is the normal face right this is normal face attached to orbit now there is isotropia so the head turns towards the left side as as you can see the as soon as the head turns towards the left side the center the gaze was restored to normal position right before it was isotropic now the orbit turned towards the left side so the normal gaze has been restored so you can see normal gaze isotropia head turns towards the left side normal gaze so as a as a result of an accommodative effort in left sided uh, in in six now palsy there is loss of abduction lateral rectus palsy so ipsilateral what you have to remember is ipsilateral turning of head right this is the only thing uh, important or significant that happens in six now palsy now <coughs> talking about the fourth nerve palsy as you all know so fourth superior oblique superior oblique is paralyzed in fourth nerve palsy right so there is loss of intorsion there is loss of intorsion we will discuss in, in in the eyeball prosthetic eyeball there is lot loss of intorsion right so overactive extorsion there is loss of depression there is hypertrophia there is loss of abduction there is esotropia these are the three functions of superior oblique am i clear right so the matter of fact is these three things happen due to the loss of action of these things right so we are again discussing a case of left sided fourth nerve palsy right now let us discuss this is the left eye right left sided loss of intorsion leading to see uh, leading to left sided extorsion right this is the straight axis now as we discussed there is left sided extorsion left sided extorsion see the axis has been disturbed due to the fourth nerve palsy paralyzing the intorting function of superior oblique am i clear right so this is so let me again show it to you this is the normal gaze right there is left sided extorsion left sided extorsion now in order to accommodate this thing this is the left side right side in order to accommodate this thing the head the head that lies over here it tilts towards the right side right see this is normal gaze left sided extorsion the orbit turns along with the face tilting the face tilts towards the right side see we restored the gaze the axis has been restored let me again show it to you normal gaze left sided fourth nerve palsy leading to extorsion the axis has been changed if you can see the line axis has been changed and as an accommodative effort the orbit the orbit along with the right eye uh, right uh, along with the head head tilting towards the right side you can see the axis has been restored extorsion orbit uh, head tilting towards the right towards the right side axis has been restored normal gaze right so this we could we could understand there is left sided extorsion right head tilt there is opposite side head tilt this unit to be uh, keep in mind there is opposite side head tilt now similarly there is esotropia left sided we are discussing the case of left side i will repeat it one and again one in all this is the left sided fourth nerve palsy superior oblique paralysis leading to esotropia esotropia right esotropia now now what we what we have to do as an accommodative effort the head turns towards the left side head turns towards the left side right normal gaze has been restored this was normal and this is a normal person's gaze right there is this person has got fourth nerve left sided superior oblique palsy leading to esotropia 
now is an accommodative effort the head turns towards the left side see there is difference between tilt and turn tilt is this tilt is this and turn is this tilt is this turn is this and chin elevation and chin depression right and these this is a different thing both of them are different right eyeball can move independently but whatever the way the face moves the orbit will move along with that the eyeball has to move and that is the reason why accommodation these things happen right so isotropia right isotropia to accommodate the head turns towards the left see the normal eyeball gaze has been restored i again show it to you this is isotropia right now what happens is head turns towards the same side and here it is the case of left sided so that turns towards the left side normal gaze has been restored right the third thing that uh, so there is same sided head turning opposite sided head tilt right what happens in hypertropia what happens in the, the third thing that happens is hypertropia right hypertropia there is hypertropia right in order to accommodate the face and the chin depresses the face and the chin depresses normal gaze has been restored i'll show it to you again this is an orbit this is the eyeball there is due to the fourth knock palsy there is hypertrophy right there is hypertrophy in order to accommodate the face and the chin depresses this way you can see you can see the orbit has been the gaze has been restored this is normal let me show it to you this is normal right this is hypertropia and accommodative effort this is normal gaze has been restored right and what i what one more thing that happens uh, these things three things we discussed there is opposite side head tilt same side head turn and chin is depressed in as it is hypertropia and what is important point in this that chin hypertropia which increases on adduction right there is loss of abduction so there, there is already hyperactive adduction that is going on and if you uh, still if you uh, due to your effort if you still adduct more the hypertropia obviously will be obviously will be increasing because already the adduction was hyperactive right and one more thing is <coughs> uh, there is diplopia when you, you when you are going downstairs when you look downstairs or when you are reading right okay now the third palsy is the third nerve palsy right the third nerve palsy is very important because there are significant changes seen in this nerve palsy right the third nerve supply superior rectus inferior oblique medial rectus these three are the significant muscles which will affect the accommodative squint or effort or whatever right? what the accommodative effort that happens like chin goes upwards and whatever it is right so there is superior rectus and inferior oblique palsy both of them functions both of them have a function of elevation so there is loss of elevation leading to hypotropia right this is there is loss of elevation leading to hypotropia there is medial rectus palsy leading to loss of adduction leading to exotropia right so we are discussing a case we are discussing a case of left sided third nerve palsy right so first of all there is superior rectus inferior oblique paralysis loss of elevation there is hypotropia depression right as an accommodative effort the chin goes upwards as soon as the chin goes upwards the gaze is restored let me show you this is normal gaze right due to third nerve palsy there is depression chin goes downwards uh, i mean uh, uh, the gaze goes downwards as an accommodative effort chin goes upwards the gaze has been restored normal gaze depression that is hypertrophia accommodative effort chin goes upwards the orbit goes upwards the gaze has been restored right the second thing that happens over here uh, so in third nerve palsy there is chin going upwards the second thing that happens over here in the left side in a case of left sided third nerve paralysis there is left sided exotropia there is left sided exotropia so this as an accommodative effort the face turns towards the right yes, side you see so there is left sided exotropia left sided exotropia and as an accommodative effort the face turns towards the opposite side and in this case it turns towards the right side the gaze has been restored 
see this is the normal gauge right normal gauge to do third third nerve paralysis there is loss of medial rectus function there is loss of adduction there is exotropia as an accommodative effort the face turns towards the right side the gaze has been restored right so this is the case we take the case of left sided third nerve palsy left sided exotropia exotropia accommodative effort face turns towards the opposite side that is the right side the gaze has been restored another thing that happens over years here is there is loss of near reflex there is loss of paralysis of sphincter pupilla leading to the dilatation of pupils there is loss of adduction loss there, there is the loss of near reflex and third nerve supply the levator palpebrae superioris so there is loss of tosis so the accommodative efforts that happen over here is chin going upwards there is hypotropia hypotropia see so in third nerve palsy as we discussed there is loss of superior rectus inferior oblique function loss of elevation there is hypotropia right hypotropia is an accommodative effort the chin goes upwards the orbit goes upwards the gaze has been restored this is the normal person third nerve palsy there is hypotropia due to loss of elevation the orbit along with the chin goes upwards the gaze has been restored right the second thing that happens over here is why the face turns towards the opposite side right why the face turns towards the opposite side we will take the example of left sided third nerve palsy there is left sided exotropia left sided exotropia as an accommodative effort the face turns towards the right the orbit face turns towards the right the gaze has been restored normal person left sided third nerve palsy there is left sided exotropia the face along with the orbit turns towards the right side that is the opposite side the gaze has been restored another thing that happens is loss of near reflex paralysis of sphincter pupillae leading to dilatation of pupil there is loss of adduction and uh, third nerve also supplies the levator palpebrae superioris so there is tosis due to lps paralysis that was quint inside out guys and girls as i said now this is very interesting if you work it out yourself you can easily understand it, these things and it is very interesting right as i said the prerequisite of this video is a brain a little bit of common sense a little bit of interest in ophthalmology thank you guys for watching this video